created another structure of periodic table which consisted of 1 to 18 groups. Other than groups, it also had horizontal rows which numbered from 1 to 7. They were called as the periods. You might be wondering what happened to these two. Well, these are a different groups, a different series called as the lanthanide and the actinide series. All of these constituted, that is the groups, the periods, the lanthanide and the actinide series to create the structure of modern periodic table. He made sure that elements in the modern periodic table were classified on the basis of their atomic numbers and electronic configurations and not on the basis of their atomic masses. And hence, he categorized them into blocks. The S block, the P block, the D block and the F block, my dear child. Now these modern periodic table groups and periods were completely filled with elements in total 118 elements in their increasing order of the atomic number so this 118 boxes including the two series at the bottom were filled with elements particularly in the groups and in the periods so if you observe hydrogen whose atomic number is 1 is placed at the first position whereas helium which has an atomic number 2 is placed at the 18th group and with an atomic number 2 written on it so it always went in a horizontal manner rather than the vertical manner well he also put these elements in a very specialized manner do you observe this zigzag line to be here well this zigzag line is an intermediary element which shows the property of both metals and non-metals and hence these are called as metalloids they divided your elements that were there on the left side to be the metals and when they were on the right side they were to be the non-metals so that is how this modern periodic table was classified by Dimitri Mendeleev but again there was a question that what were these elements over here that was a question so he put forth the idea of placing metalloids in between so that they can clearly divide metals on this side and non-metals on the other side. That is how the modern periodic table was fully complete. Now let's see how the blocks of the modern periodic table were classified. Well, you know my dear child that there are four blocks. We have the S block, we have the D block, we have the P block and at the bottom the two series are the F block. Let's start by understanding the S block of the modern periodic table. So if you carefully look at this S block, my dear child, you will observe how many groups to be present in the S block. Well, of course, there are two groups and these two groups have certain elements which are placed within them. Now, these elements that are there, they are placed in a proper manner based upon the valency of that atom. So if you carefully observe the elements in the first group, you have hydrogen, you have lithium, you have sodium, you have potassium. If you look at the structures and their electronic configurations, you will observe that lithium is atomic number 3 with an electronic configuration of 2,1. Sodium is 11 atomic number and the electronic configuration is 2,8,1. Potassium has an electronic configuration of 2,881 summing up to give an atomic number of 19. What is one thing that you observe in them? The last orbit contains only one electron. Yes. So, 
the last orbit or the outermost shell it will contain one electron for these elements and hence they are all placed in the first group in the s block now can you put this idea on the group 2 well of course yes you have elements like beryllium magnesium calcium well beryllium is with an atomic number 4 so it has an electronic configuration of 2 comma 2 outermost of it has two electrons and hence it is placed in group 2 so all the elements in the s block they will contain one or two electrons in the outermost shell if they have one electron in the outermost shell they'll be placed in the first group wonderful and when they have two electrons in their outermost shell they'll be placed in the second group just like lithium sodium potassium all of them having one electron in their outermost orbit now when we look at them in their chemical reactions because they have electrons less than four they will always give away or donate the electrons to the other elements because they donate they become electropositive that is they will have a positive charge on them and when they have a positive charge on them they make themselves as metals so everything in the x block will be called as a metal except for hydrogen hydrogen will share the electrons it's never going to donate it will always share the electrons unless and until it's forming an ionic bond that too it is going to have partial charges on it now when we talk about this s block they are called as alkali metals or alkali metals except for hydrogen which is not a metal they fall under the group of normal elements now when we go to another block we have this group from 13 to 18 which will together constitute to give us the p block so now let's understand the p block of the modern periodic table it has groups from 13 to 18 and in this p block you will see there are a lot of things in the group 13 the last digit is 3 because the last digit is 3 the electrons in the outermost shell have to be well in s block the first group it was 1 in s block the second group it was 2 so in the p block the third group it is going to be 3 wonderful so look at these elements you have boron aluminium they all have 2,3 2,8,3 2, 2,8,18,3 all the outermost orbits have three electrons and because they have three electrons they are placed in the 13th group of the p block so that's the second character of p block that is you have three to eight electrons in their outermost shell now when we try to talk about this group it is going to have everything within it it's going to have a metal a non-metal and the one that divides the metal with the non-metal in a zigzag manner containing the metalloid so a zigzag line will divide the periodic table that is the p block of the periodic table and the entire periodic table into two parts the metals and the non-metals so mind you my dear child all the elements on the left side of the zigzag are going to be metals even though if it is in the s block and the d block and everything on the right side is going to be a non-metal the zigzag line themselves are going to be metalloids when you look at the p block they have metals non-metals metalloids but along with them they also have one group which is called as an inert group or a noble group these elements even though given a chance will never react with any other element why because they are satisfied so if you look at them that is neon ne argon ar krypton kr xenon xe if you look at them all of them have complete outermost orbits that is they have an octet the outermost shell is completely filled 
So when the outermost shell is completely filled, my dear child, it means it is stable. But what about helium? Helium does not have eight, just like the others. It has two electrons. Let's look at the structure of helium atom. Helium's atomic number is two. So how many shells is it going to occupy? One. What is that shell? K shell. And what is the maximum capacity of K shell? Two. So does the K shell have two electrons in helium? Yes. So if it has these two electrons in the K shell, it means it is again stable. It's neither going to take electrons nor is it going to give away electrons. So that is why it forms a duplet state. Duke means two electrons. In that case, oct means eight electrons in the outermost orbit. So we have duplet and we have octate. And because they are stable, they form another element that is the inert elements or the noble gases. So that group is also called as the zero group element. Why? Because there are zero reactions that they perform and they don't have any shell which is not fulfilled. They have a completely fulfilled orbit. Let's go to another group and that is the groups from 3 to 12. That consists of the D block of the modern periodic table. This D block has groups from 3 to 12 and these groups they are purely metals but they don't have three four five six electrons in their outermost orbit it's not like that rather they have a different property and that property is that when you look at the structure of these elements they will have two completely unfulfilled shells and because of that they are placed in the third group. When you go ahead, they will have such shells which are not fulfilled. They are not complete. Hence, these elements, they have outermost shells incomplete. They are all metals and these metals are placed on the left side of the zigzag line. They are usually called as the transition elements, my dear child. Now, if you carefully observe, in the D block, you have just below scandium and yttrium, you will have lanthanide and actinide. That is lanthanium and actinium. That lanthanium and actinium have another series they'll perform. And that is the lanthanide and the actinide series. Well, these lanthanide and the actinide series are nothing but the F block of the modern periodic table. So these F block elements are present at the bottom of the periodic table and they are called as the series, the lanthanide and the actinide series. They are going to have three unfulfilled orbits or shells and hence they are taken as a part from the transition the D block which had two unfulfilled shells so the outermost shells they have three unfulfilled shells over there one thing that we need to understand is that they have come from the transition elements and because they have come from within the transition elements they are called as the inner transition elements and they are all metals why because they have come from the D block that contains metals and yes please do not forget to like share subscribe and press the bell icon